the subject, we are not forgotten. We are not forgotten. Okay, I'm going to have somebody to follow me. We are not forgotten. To the glory of God, you may be seated in the presence of our Lord. My brothers and sisters, in the June 5th, 2020 article in NPR entitled, Being Black in America, We Have a Place in This World, Nicholas Gibbs of Spring, Texas said, and I quote, to be black in America, you have to endure white supremacy, you have to fear the police. To be American, you have the luxury of saying they should have complied. To be black in America, you have to hope someone recorded your compliance because you may no longer be around to defend yourself. The Reverend Carol Thomas Cassell of State College, Pennsylvania said, and I quote, her DNA will continue to scream and agony because black men and black boys are not safe in America. She, however, went on to say with a certain degree of hope that, and I quote, I will light the candle Hope it blossoms into a steady flame of peace and say these words aloud. We are included. We belong. We are here. For just like you, entitled by birthright, we have a place in this world too. Amen. These sentiments are fresh reminders that we are a people who are accustomed to and acquainted with struggle. These sentiments are fresh reminders that we are a people who are familiar with oppression and knowledgeable of our hardships. Systems have been against us. Leaders have been afraid of us. Policies have been developed to restrict us. But through it all, God has not forgotten us. Amen. The saints have criticized us even though the playing field that they constructed was never left. We've been treated cruelly, we've been abused harshly, but God has not forgotten us. Yeah. Our story in 2022 is a continuation of the storyline in Exodus chapter number three. We have made great strides by the grace of God, but the struggle still continues. Amen. We struggle for fair and equal pay, struggle for basic human rights, struggle for fair housing, struggle for educational opportunities, struggle to have our voices heard, and by the grace of God, strides have been made. Strides have been made, but tragically, we still live with the reality that being black in America is an ongoing struggle. Even right now, voting rights are being ignored. Affirmative action is targeted for destruction. Student loan debt is suffocating our people, and our mental health is under assault. Just like those in the text who cry out to God, we too have been crying out to God. Cries of agony, cries of pain, cries of anger, cries of frustration, cries of irritation, and even cries of dismay. Mamas are crying over the loss of sons to police brutality. Fathers are crying over the loss of daughters to domestic violence. Children are crying over the loss of friends in mass school shootings. And now COVID has wrecked their family. Grandparents are crying over the idea that their grandchildren are being pulled back into yesterday. Cries are being lifted. And even though the world ignores our cries, we serve a God who hears our cries. How do you know people because the word of God says that my ears are open yes. to the cry yes. of my people? Yes. The world is trying to write us out of history, even right now, but the God of all creation is keenly aware of who we are. That's why the old saints used to say in the hard times, Regina, our hope is built on nothing less yes. than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I, I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but holy man. On Jesus' name. See, the world is oblivious to our cries, but the God who created the heavens and the earth is keenly aware of our suffering. And that's the hope and the reassurance we have found in this text on today that God hears our cries. That's good news. 
But can I bless you, Andrew? Let's give you some greater news today. Because God not only hears your cry, yeah. but God responds to the cry yeah. of God's people. Yeah. See, the greater news in this text is the fact that God has not forgotten us. Listen again to verses 7 through 8. Then the Lord said, I have seen how cruelly my people are being treated in Egypt. I have heard them cry out to be rescued from their slave drivers. I know all about their suffering. Yeah. And so I have come down to rescue them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of Egypt to a spacious land, one which is rich and fertile, and in which the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, even the Shabbites, I don't know, they are not there. What Pharaoh, and some of y'all call it, amen. What Pharaoh did then, the Pharaohs of today are still trying to do. But God has not forgotten us. How do you know that God has not forgotten us? We know that God has not forgotten us because the text tells us, first of all, that God sees us. Yeah. Go back to verse 7. He said, I have seen how cruel cool my people, listen, are being treated. Yeah. He didn't say how they were treated. He said how they are being treated, yeah. which implies that God has carried into God has carried awareness of the people's condition. Yeah. Pharaoh knew what he was doing, and even though he saw the living condition of the people deteriorate, he refused to do anything to enhance their standard of living. Yeah. Pharaoh saw the neglect and the abuse the people were struggling with, because Pharaoh was the reason behind yeah. all of it. Yeah. And similarly, modern day Pharaohs like Joe Manchin and Christian son know the conditions of the people, but yet they refuse to make concessions to improve the standard of living for people who are suffering cruel, fearful of the possibility that the reign of power would be overthrown by the vast number of Israelites, Pharaoh determined to make things hard. You do know that when folk feel threatened in their places of power and position, they will then make it hard on those, you know what I'm talking about, Pharaoh determined he was going to make things hard. His fear and his arrogance moved him to not only oppress a people, but to intentionally ignore them. But here's the shot. God saw every detail. The blessing behind that truth, beloved, today is that God is never preoccupied with something else that you become insignificant in the mind of Almighty God. That's a good spot to remind all the forces of hell today that we as a people are not insignificant in the eyes of Almighty God. God sees us, which means God is aware of where we are, God is aware of what we are in, and God is aware of everything we are up against. Over the years and throughout the neglect and cruelty we have faced at the hands of Pharaoh and his oppressive and offensive, offensive system, we have declared with conviction and with confidence that his eyes are on the sparrow and I know that he watches me. God has not forgotten us because first of all, God sees us. That's the whole church says. Yeah. He sees me. Amen. Yeah. And, and not only does God see us, but God knows us. Pharaoh had enacted tactics to oppress and to inflict suffering. And even though those outside of the scope of knowledge were unaware of what was going on, God knew everything. Yeah. During the closed door meetings they have about you, God knows everything. In the back room deal, they're trying to conspire against you, God knows everything. In the after hour huddles with all the makeup schemes and plans, God knows everything. Everything that concerned the well-being of God's people, God knew it all. The all-knowing, the omniscient God, the all-knowing God, was keenly aware of everything they were facing. And that's why we have survived for this long. Y'all, y'all not gonna shout right there. We serve a God who knows everything about us, and that knowledge is crucial to all of our survival. See, it is a terrible thing, it is a destructive thing to go through this life 
and nobody is aware of what you are dealing with. That's why every now and again, for your own mental well-being, you want to just let somebody know what you're dealing with. You ain't got to tell them all your details, but let them know something that you're dealing with. Amen. Amen. See, it's a terrible thing to go through life that way, living life without somebody being aware of and understanding of your plight will have a negative impact on your life. Come here, let me talk to you for a minute because life was never designed to be a solo trip to nowhere. But when you have, when you know that God knows you, then you know the journey that you face in front of you will become somewhat bearable. See, during the cruelty of slavery, our ancestors would sing a spiritual song called We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder. That symbolic ladder they were talking about inspired the slaves to keep climbing, believing in God as they journeyed through all the trials of their lives. They knew that true freedom began within their souls and that nothing the oppressor could do to them would rob them of the freedom they had down in their soul. They understood that our relationship with God grant us a level of freedom that no chain can take away from us, no shackle can deny us, no Christian slave owner can rob us of. They understood that our relationship with God was one that allowed us to see the possibility that existed despite all the hell that I was going through. And I wish I had five of y'all who showed up today who could still see some possibility for your life despite all the problems I got going on in my life. They sang the song, you're climbing gentle flat will declare that every round goes higher and higher. You want to bump your neighbor and say, I'm going higher and I'm going higher. And that belief fueled them to declare at the end of the song, we will rise, we will shine, and we will give God the glory. And I'm going to give y'all a chance right there to give the devil out to be the light. Is there anybody who showed up today for you in this building on social media and you still believe I'm going to rise, I'm going to shine, I'm going to give God the glory and tell about 13 seconds and now you're going to find your God. You are going to find every work of the devil and return to your God. I ain't dead. I'm not finished. I'm not over. God ain't forgotten me. And despite the going on in my life, I'm going to rise, I'm going to shine, and I'm going to give God the glory for the hope of glory. God was aware then, 
and God is aware right now. Look, he says, no, Moses, I know all about their son. And nobody had to tell me, no. I've seen it for myself. Moses, I want you to understand something. Nothing about my people escapes my knowledge. Somebody should have torn the people upside down with that. Because when nobody else knows what you are struggling with, the assurance and comfort that you have is that God knows everything that's going on in my life. When nobody else knows what keeps you up at night, what causes you the greatest fear, what struggles you can't seem to overcome, God knows it all. But look, that's not all. That's not all. God sees us, God knows us, and all of that upfront information report causes God to act on our behalf. Yeah. Church folk don't even want to shout at right? yeah. God sees us, God knows us, and then all of that information causes God to act. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You realize there's some people in your life right now who see what you're dealing with. Who know what you're dealing with. Yeah. And they ain't lifted a finger to help you deal with it. Yeah. They see the struggle. They know the struggle. And they have not done. And all that information has not moved them to do anything on your behalf. But God. Yeah. Yeah. He said, no. Listen, no. Listen, no. I know all about that stuff. And as a result of me knowing that, I have now come down to rescue them. In other words, Moses, I want you to let, I want you to know something. Tell them folks. Help is on the way. Boy, I thought that was my little talk. Now, now, this ain't just any kind of help, Moses. This is divine help. You do understand there's a difference in help and divine help. Okay. Because when you just get a help, some folk can block the help coming your way. But when you get divine help, can't no devil stop you. This is the kind of help that man can't deny from coming into your life. This is the kind of help that strategies can't avert. This is the kind of help that plans can't avoid. The kind of help that systems can't derail and policies cannot subvert. See, Pharaoh and his oppressive tactics aimed at dehumanizing God's people had not gone unnoticed by God. Pharaoh and his oppressive tactics aimed at breaking the mental and the physical and the emotional state of God's people had not gone unnoticed. Pharaoh's harsh and cruel tactics designed to further advance an oppressive culture of poverty and hopelessness by God's, for God's people had not gone unnoticed by Almighty God. He said, Moses, I have seen the plight of my people. I know how bad it is. I got all that information stored up in front of my mind. I know now is the right time to make a move on their behalf. And I don't know who I'm talking to on a Sunday morning, but you've been going through it for a minute now. You've been struggling with it for a minute now. You convinced yourself that ain't nobody gonna help me now. You've been fooled to believe that you're not going to come out now. But the Lord told me to tell you on Sunday morning that he has not forgotten you. And divine help is on the way. I wish you would grab your neighbor real quick and tell your neighbor, I feel a breakthrough coming out. I feel deliverance coming out. I feel my joy coming back. The Bible says that when God told Moses, I've seen it all and I know it all. I'm now going to make a move on their behalf. And I need the Bible to make up in your mind right now. Church beat. Call it the devil. Call it demon of despair. The demon 